dividing polynomials, the first thing they do is just go back in your memory, I'm sure a pleasant memory, third and fourth grade of long division, um, and uh, quotient dividend divisor. The guy you are dividing is the dividend. What you're dividing by is the divisor. The answer is the quotient, right? And so you look at the dividend and you say, how many times does the divisor go into the dividend? Oh, it goes, in this case on the left, four times. Um, and so look at the example of 56 divided by 8 up here. 56 is divisible by 8. So we say, how many times can 8 go into 56? Well, 7. 7 times 8 is 56. You subtract 0. And so when we get a 0, we know that that is directly divisible or that 7 and 8 are factors of 56. So we know that this is a factor of 56, and we know that this is a factor of 56 because our remainder was 0. Now, if we did something like this, 42 divided by 5, then you would say, well, what, how many times can 5 go into 42? Well, that's 8 times, and we do 8 times 5 is 40, and we subtract down, and then 42 minus 40 is 2. So this actually tells us a couple things. The answer here is 8 and 2 fifths, if you remember, right? Put the remainder over the divisor. Um, and then we also know that 5 and 8 are not factors of 42. Like, we know that. And the reason we know that is because the remainder is not 0, if the remainder is anything but zero, they are not factors. They, you can divide, but they're not factors, all right? And so you actually did this when we did um, exponents and properties of exponents. 2x squared, well, how many times can x go into 2x squared? Well, uh, what, basically what you're saying is what do I have to multiply x by to get 2x squared? Well, I have to multiply x by 2 and x to get x squared. So 2x times x is 2x squared. And 2x squared minus 2x squared is 0. So that actually tells me that x and 2x are factors of 2x squared. And so you can apply this practice of long division to polynomials, obviously, as the title of this particular section indicates. All right. So we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is long division of polynomials. So look at the top of the next page. Divide x squared by 3x minus 12, and we're dividing it by x minus 3. So on the inside of this division, we are going to put the x squared plus the 3x minus the 12. Now, because these are all individual monomials, when we divide, we are actually going to only look at the x compared to the x squared to determine what we're going to multiply by. So what do I need to multiply x by to get x squared is really the question that I'm asking. Well, I have to multiply x by x to get x squared, right? And so I am going to take this and I am going to multiply x by x, which means that's my first thing. I'm going to line it up with the one that matches it, all right? So I, I lined it up with the 3x there. So then I take that x and I multiply it to the x minus 2, to both of them. So I say x times x, well, that is x squared. And I say x times negative 3 is negative 3x, all right? Now, remember in long division, you are subtracting, okay? Now, my advice here is to add the opposite, all right? And I say this because the number one mistake in long division is your positives and negatives. And if you mess up one, it's going to throw off the rest of your problem, all right? And so um, my advice is to say add the opposite because I have a lot of people who would say, oh, well, x squared minus x squared is zero and 3x and negative 3x are zero. So we're done and then we can bring down the next one. And that's not true because we are subtracting. All right? And so if you change it to adding the opposite of both, you see that you end up with 6x, not zero there, okay? And so your brain will play tricks on you and you will subtract one and add the other and you will do it wrong, okay? And so my advice is always to add the opposite and then you're always adding down, which is just subtraction. So we have x squared and negative x squared that obviously cancel and we have 3x and 3x that actually give us the 6x. Just like with long division, you're gonna bring this guy down. So we're gonna say minus 12. And then we're gonna do this process again. What do I need? To multiply x by to get 6x. Well, I need to multiply by 6. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say I multiply by a positive 6 here. 
6 times x is 6x. 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. Again, I am adding the opposite of both of these. So I get 6 and negative 6x, those cancel. Negative 12 and positive 18 give me 6. I have nothing more to bring down, so 6 is actually my remainder, okay? X cannot go into 6. There's nothing I can multiply it by to make it go into 6. This is my remainder of 6. Now, I will say that they, on this particular example, leave it as a remainder of 6, but throughout the rest of the chapter, you're going to actually do it just like you would with long division, making it a mixed number. So you're actually going to say as your answer, x plus 6, and then it's a positive 6 over my divisor, which was x minus 3. And so this is actually what your answers will look like for me. You're, you need to put your remainder over your divisor. Okay? And so a couple of things here. Um, that polynomial divided by x minus 3 is x plus 6 plus 6 over x minus 3. It's not a factor, by the way. How do I know it's not a factor? Well, my remainder was 6, right? And so I'm done. This is the end of my problem. All right, so go ahead and try check understanding number 1. Determine whether x plus 4 is a factor of each of these polynomials. Well, how do you suppose I find out if it's a factor using division? What am I going to look at? Yeah, if my remainder is 0, yes, it is a factor. If my remainder is anything other than 0, no, it is not a factor. And so one way you can determine if something is a factor is division. And so you would divide them out just like we did before. Go through the process and you're going to say is this a factor well this first one is a factor right and you can see when they do the example on the next one they get a remainder of one so no the second one is not a factor and so you're really just doing the same process and you're looking at this particular guy here if your remainder is a zero your answer is yes if it is anything other than zero, your answer is no, not a factor. And that's what you're looking for. So go ahead and determine on number two, A and B, are those factors, yes or no? All right, so synthetic division is, is a simplified process of long division. Um, it's best to use synthetic division when you don't have a coefficient, a leading coefficient other than one. 
So like on the first example that we did, example one, um, in fact, all the examples they've given us have been this way. Um, you have x minus three, you had x plus four, but so, in some of your activities, it could be three x plus two, and you can divide by that, or you can divide by two x plus four. Like it doesn't, you can divide by something that doesn't have a leading coefficient of one. With synthetic division, it's easier to divide by something that does not have a leading coefficient other than one, because it will create fractions if you, if you do this particular process, which is fine if you wanna deal with fractions, but, um, by synthetic division, you, you kind of do this different process. It's an algorithm of adding down and multiplying up. Um, and they're basically taking a flip of the division, and they're just using the coefficients, and they are just taking that binomial that you're dividing by, and they are setting it equal to zero and just using your zero there instead of your entire binomial. And so once you see the process, it'll make more sense. So what you do with this is you take, and they usually just draw it like this, you take your coefficients. You're gonna take the three from the x cubed, the negative four from the x squared, the two from the x, and the constant of negative one. And you're gonna put those there. And then what you're gonna do again is you're gonna take this guy right here, but we're not gonna use this. We're gonna use what makes him zero, the zero from him, which is negative one, right? And we are going to use that for our synthetic division. Okay? So now your process is you add down and multiply up. By that, I mean we're going to add down here. 3 plus nothing, that gives me 3. And then we are going to multiply up. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Okay? And then we're going to do that again. We're going to add down. Negative 4 and negative 3 is negative 7. And then we are going to multiply up. Negative 1 times negative 7 is positive 7. Then we're going to add down. 2 and 7 is 9. Then we're going to multiply up. Negative 1 times 9 is negative 9. Then we're going to add down. Negative 1 and negative 9 is negative 10. Okay? Add down, multiply up. Now, my answer then... I take all of these and they become my new coefficients. So three is my new coefficient. Whatever degree I started with, I drop it by one. So I started with a three. So I started with x cubed. I'm gonna go x squared minus seven x plus nine. This guy right here is my remainder. Minus 10 over my original binomial x plus 1. And that is my answer. If you did long division, you'd get the same thing. Something I want to point out that they don't actually deal with in this particular book, but they mention it in pre-cal. Um, and you can run across it. I don't know if you run across it in any of the examples, but you can definitely run across it in the, the problems that I give you. With both long division and synthetic division, you must have all the monomial degrees in between the one you start with and the constant. Um, so what I mean by that is this one started on a x cubed no yeah x cubed so you must have x cubed x squared x and a constant if for some reason and it happens you had been given something like x cubed plus x minus six then you would have set this guy up one zero one negative six you must have a placeholder for every degree from the highest that you start with down to your constant including your constant if you don't have a constant you must put a zero for that guy this is also true of long division. So if I had set this up with long division, I would have set x squared, 
or x cubed rather plus zero x plus x minus six. You must have every degree in a monomial from the highest to your constant. Um, so it's important that when you get a problem, the first thing you check is, do I have all of my degrees from the highest to the one that I, I end with? The volume on cubic feet of sarcophagus, excluding the cover, obviously, because the cover is dome shaped for this particular one, can be expressed as the product of three dimensions. Obviously, volume is um, three dimensional. Uh, the product is three dimensions. They gave us the volume equation, x cubed minus 13x plus 12, and they gave us the length, and this is actually an example we're going to have to plug in the zero, of x plus 4. Find the linear expressions with integer coefficients for the other dimensions. Assume that the width is greater than the height, all right? So um, we already know one dimension, x plus 4. We know the volume, which is really length times width times height, if you remember volume of a rectangular prism, right? Um, and so they want to know what the other ones could be. We can do synthetic division here or long. It really doesn't matter whichever one you prefer. I'm going to do synthetic. What I'm dividing is this guy. I'm starting with x cubed. My coefficient for x cubed is 1. What is my coefficient for x squared? Zero. zero. And so this is where I must put a 0. My coefficient for x is negative 13, and my constant is 12. I am dividing by x plus 4. Remember, I'm using the 0 here. So I'm going to use a negative 4. Then I'm going to add down, multiply up. 1 down is 1. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. 0 and negative 4, negative 4. Negative 4 and negative 4 is positive 16. Negative 13 and positive 16 is positive 3. Negative 4, positive 3 is negative 12. And I have a 0 here. So 1, I know that is a factor, which we were expecting that when they said it is the length. So I know that x plus 4 is a factor. And so then I'm going to look at this guy. I started with x cubed. Remember, you always drop it. So I have 1x squared minus 4x plus 3. How do I find the other factors? What can I do with that trinomial? Factor it. Factors of 3 that add up to 4. 1 and 3, right? So my other factors here are x minus 3 and x minus 1. Those are my length, width, and height of that particular sarcophagus. So you can also use division to factor, all right? You can use the one that has been given to reduce it down to a trinomial that is factorable, and then you can factor it. So that would be your answer. Second part of this question is just, you know, continuation. If the length is 10 feet, what are the other dimensions? They told us the length here is x plus 4. So if x plus 4 is 10... We can easily solve for x. What is x? Six. Right. So if the length is 6, I can find the other two by saying, well, it's going to be a 10 by a 6 minus 3. That's 3. By a 6 minus 1, which is 5. So a remainder of zero tells you you have a factor. And a remainder actually also tells you what happens if you were to plug that number in. Okay? Because let's, let's take the zero example. If you plug in that number, you should get zero for the equation because that's what zero means. Okay? But it can, do, it can do the same for other numbers. So if I were to take this long polynomial and say evaluate it for negative four, Normally, you would have to say, okay, negative 4 to the 4th minus 5 times negative 4 squared plus 4 times negative 4 plus 12, right? Which is doable, you know, 
this isn't a ginormous one, you could possibly do it. Or you could do long division and your remainder would be what would happen if you plugged it in. It's pretty neat. So we take this and we're gonna say I'm gonna do long division. My exponent for the fourth is one. My exponent for cubed is zero. Squared is negative five, positive four, positive 12. They want me to evaluate for negative four. When you're just evaluating, you don't change it. Add down one, negative four, negative four, positive 16, uh, 11, negative 44, negative 40, positive 160, positive 172. So my answer to what happens when I plug in negative four is 172. It is the exact same thing if I said negative four to the fourth, minus five, negative four squared, plus four times negative four plus 12. There's actually a lot more room for error in this guy, I think, personally. I think synthetic division is easier than plugging it in when it's something that big with that many exponents, okay? So that's what that means. If I plugged in the negative four, I would get 172. So when it says evaluate using synthetic division, the only thing that is your answer is the remainder. And let me say this very clearly. If I ask you to evaluate and you give me the entire polynomial as your answer, you just answered me wrong. Okay, so if you gave me the answer, oh, well, that's x cubed minus 4x squared plus 11, x minus 40 plus 172 over x plus 4. This would be wrong because I ask you to evaluate it, which means all I'm looking for is the remainder. Okay, questions on that one?